Hello everyone! This video will show my electric conversion of an old outboard motor. The motor is from the 70s and had a defective combustion engine, so I decided to convert it to electric. And this is the result. First, I'm going to introduce you to my goals with this project. I wanted a submerged motor with a direct drive of the propeller, because this greatly increases the cooling of the motor and also generates very little noise. The whole system should be able to output around 5 kilowatts of continuous power, and I wanted to build it with a budget around 1000 euros. The first thing I needed to do was to get rid of the old engine. This was by far the easiest part of the project, but it was also quite dirty. The motor block was a structural part that held the motor housing in place, so I used an aluminium plate to hold the housing instead. The motor I'm using is a large brushless outrunner that I bought on eBay. The KV is a bit high for my purpose, so I will rewind it. Hole sensors will also be added as the motor controller needs a censored motor. The motor controller works on any brushless censored motor. This model is designed for motor powers around 6 kilowatts. All electronics are sealed in silicone, which is very good for waterproofing. Here is a wiring diagram for most of the system. You can pause the video if you want to study it in more detail. The old winding was a delta connection with two turns, and the new winding will be a Y connection with three turns. This will give a KV of approximately 80. Before starting the winding, I coated the stator in epoxy to make sure it was electrically isolated. I used a quite thick wire, but I wouldn't recommend it because it was very hard to bend. To wind the motor more easily, I 3D printed the spacers that kind of push the windings together. I determined the winding pattern using this very useful website. And then I marked the winding pattern on the stator. This is the start of the winding. My plan was to use five strands in parallel, however it was too much and I couldn't fit it. So I started over with the four strands in parallel and it was just possible to fit. It was really quite a lot of work to rewind the motor, but here it is getting finished. The winding is terminated in a Y connection, so the ends of all faces are soldered together. Then I used heat shrink and glue to waterproof the connection. The winding is finished, but I needed to add hole sensors to make the motor compatible with my controller. I ground three slots in the stator, spaced 60 degrees apart. When grinding the hole sensor slots, the metal kind of smeared out, which resulted in electrical contact between the laminations. For highest possible efficiency, all laminations should be electrically isolated from each other. I don't know how much this smeared out metal affects the motor performance, but to be on the safe side I dissolved some of the metal using hydrochloric acid. After carefully washing away the hydrochloric acid, the electrical laminations were again isolated. So I glued on the hole sensors, wired them up, and the motor was ready for the first test. The electric motor sits underwater and drives the propeller directly. It isn't waterproof from factory, so I needed to waterproof it myself. Here's a 3D model of the motor.
I will show you a section view of the motor to see all components more clearly. The stator and the rotor magnets will be painted with epoxy to seal them from water. But in the motor there are also bearings that need to be sealed. There are four small bearings on the motor shaft and one large bearing that stabilizes the rotor. The large bearing is very tricky to waterproof and it's not necessarily needed, so I removed it. And I also cut off this edge that sticks out. To seal the motor shaft and this end of the motor, I replaced the outermost bearing with a shaft seal. The other end of the motor is a bit more tricky to seal. I 3D printed this part that fits two O-rings and is clamped in place using an aluminium plate. I also added an axial bearing to absorb the thrust from the propeller. The aluminium plate that the axial bearing pushes on will be screwed into the motor. But that part can come loose because it was just fastened with glue. To solve this I drilled and tapped five holes for M3 screws and screwed it into place. To really make sure that the part didn't get loose, I used a drift pin to deform the metal near the edges. I was a bit unsure that the M3 screws alone could absorb all the force from the propeller. I painted the stator with epoxy to protect it from water. The stator slots are filled with thickened epoxy to reduce turbulence in the water. Before painting the rotor magnets with epoxy, I filled the slots with 3D printed spacers. This is the first layer of epoxy that I applied after sanding the magnets lightly. The first layer became a bit uneven, so I sanded it down and reapplied the epoxy. To get a more even coating, I spun the rotor slowly in a drill as I applied the epoxy. I also used a hair dryer to heat up the epoxy and make it harden quicker. It might not seem like it, but this part of the project was actually the hardest. The space between the rotor and the stator is really small, and to fit a good epoxy seal in that little space is really hard. But after a lot of sanding and reapplied epoxy, I finally got it to fit. To mount the electric motor on the old outboard base, I manufactured a motor holder from 8mm aluminium plate. I cut out all pieces with a jigsaw, which actually worked really great. This was the first time for me welding in aluminium, so I practiced on some scrap pieces first to make sure the welds look good and hold together. I used a MIG welder, and it was actually quite easy when you got the settings right. Here's the result, it's not the prettiest, but I'm sure it's plenty strong. Here it is, mounted on the outboard, with the electric motor in place. I drilled and filed holes for the motor wires. The electrical tape is just to check that I have some clearance to the rotor. Because when the stator heats up, it expands. And if the clearance is tight, the rotor could start to rub against the stator. Modeling a good propeller is really hard. I used a free online program that generates the propeller geometry for you. I will link it down in the description. You should check it out, it's really cool. I modified the propeller a bit in CAD to make it fit on my motor. Then I 3D printed it in PETG. The rotor kind of sits inside the propeller which makes for a really good transmission of torque. I also printed some covers to make it all more streamlined. The epoxy coating was not very good, which resulted in rust on some places of the stator. So I needed to reapply the epoxy, which I was getting quite tired of at this point. <laughs> 
I printed a larger propeller to make use of the high torque of the motor. The last step was to add an anode to make sure my beautiful creation didn't just dissolve into the sea. Here is the motor on my plywood boat that I built a year ago. The transom of my boat is very straight, which resulted in a bad trim of the motor. But there's not much I can do about that. After around 10 hours of use in salt water, small rust spots have appeared on the stator. However, the stator is still in quite good condition. The magnets also have some spots of rust. On two magnets, the epoxy coating has rubbed off and water has seeped in and started to corrode the magnets. I was a bit surprised to see so much corrosion going on. My hypothesis is that there are iron filings in the epoxy. These filings are from when I sanded the stator and the rotor magnets. So many of the rust spots are just iron filings in the epoxy rusting, not the material beneath the epoxy. But if the filings corrode, 
Water can seep in under the epoxy layer and start to corrode what's underneath as well. So, this has been quite a long video, but it's coming to an end, so I would like to say some finishing words. I think in general the project was a success. I learned a lot and the motor is very powerful and quiet, so I am quite happy with it. I have tested the motor with about 5 kilowatts of power, but I think the controller and motor should be able to handle up to 10 kilowatts of power. But to test that I would need a more powerful battery. The most critical component and the hardest part of this project was to build the waterproof motor. The motor required a lot of modifications to be waterproof. I thought the easy part was gonna be to paint the stator and rotor with epoxy, but actually it was the hardest part. So if you want to build a waterproof motor yourself, I would strongly recommend using an inrunner and not an outrunner, as you essentially just need a shaft seal to seal the motor. If you want to do something like this yourself, I would strongly recommend to put the motor where the old combustion engine was. This will result in, in a noisier operation, but a much easier conversion project. Doing it that way you can also reuse the old propeller and gear housing. Well, that was everything I had to say. If you watched the video this far, thank you very much, and please comment what you thought about it. So thanks for watching, and let's move on to the next project.